Hi all, this is Dr. Ankita from XLMRCOG and today we are going to look at the revised FIGO 2023 staging for carcinoma endometrium. It is indeed a bit difficult to remember the staging, the new staging 2023, which is why it is important that we are familiar with certain terminologies in order to better understand the staging. These include grade of the tumor, the histological classification, lymph node status, myometrial invasion, and lymphovascular space invasion. So what is tumor grading? Tumor grading is of two types, architectural grading and nuclear grading, nuclear atypia. So architectural grading is divided into three types, grade one, grade two, and grade three. Grade 1 is where less than 5% of the tumor comprises of solid components. That is on histopathology. Grade 2 is when 6 to 50% comprises of solid component. Rest of the tumor is the glandular component. While grade 3 is more than 50%, 50% or more of solid component. Now we should understand here that when the tumor comprises of more solid elements. That means they are comprising of cells that are rapidly divising, dividing, which is why it, is, it, it appears as a solid structure on histopathology. That is why the greater the solid component, the greater is the grade. The other grade is the nuclear atypia. When the nuclear atypia appears excessive for the grade, it raises the grade by 1. So if it is a grade 1 tumor and the nuclear atypia appears out of sync for grade 1, it appears excessive for grade 1, then we label it as grade 2. Similarly, if it is a grade 2 tumor and the nuclear atypia appears excessive for grade 2, we label it as grade 3. The other thing that we need to know is the histological type of the tumor. This is because the classification or the staging requires us to classify the tumor into aggressive as well as non-aggressive types. Now the non-aggressive types would include endometrioid carcinoma grade 1 and grade 2. These are the low grade ones. Endometrioid carcinoma grade 3 would be the aggressive kind. The rest of the aggressive tumors would be serous carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma, mixed carcinoma, undifferentiated carcinoma, carcinosarcoma, other unusual types such as mesonephric-like gastrointestinal type of mucinous tumor. So for staging the tumor, the first thing that we need to know is the histological type, which would be available after doing an endometrial biopsy or biopsy of the tumor. Next is myometrial invasion. Earlier, the stage 1 was classified under stage 1A and stage 1B, wherein 1A was less than 50% and 1B was more than 50%. Now, we have another stage added, wherein the tumor is limited to the endometrium without any myometrial invasion. So, that is no myometrial invasion, less than 50%, more than 50%. Lymphovascular space invasion is basically the invasion of the lymphatic and the vascular uh, spaces within the tissue and this is not equivalent to involvement of the lymph nodes or the vessels beyond the uterus. We have two varieties that is focal as well as extensive. Now extensive is when more than or equal to five vessels within the tissue are infiltrated. Cervical stromal invasion. Any invasion of the cervical stroma identified as the, at the level of or deeper than a benign endocervical crypt is considered as stromal invasion. So this is something new that has been introduced in the staging for CA endometrium, association of cancer in the ovary. Now there is, it is observed that low grade endometrioid cancer may have clonal expression and it is expressed in the endometrium at the same time it is expressed in the ovary 
it does not mean that the cancer has metastasized to the ovary which is why clinically it does not behave in the same manner as metastatic cancer to the ovary which is classified as stage 3a the treatment for these cancers would definitely be different from stage 3a cancers which is why it is included in a separate stage that is stage 1a3 so what does stage 1a3 include there shouldn't be more than superficial myometrial invasion that is the myometrial invasion if at all present should be less than 50% there is absence of lvsi that is to a substantial extent absence of additional metastasis elsewhere the ovarian tumor is unilateral limited to the ovary without capsular invasion so if these criteria are fulfilled in a low grade endometrioid cancer then it is considered as stage 1a3 uterine serosal involvement means the tumor is reaching the sub mesothelial fibroconnective tissue or the mesothelial layer regardless of whether the tumor cells may or may not be present on the serosal surface of the uterus lymph node metastasis these include micrometastasis and macrometastasis which are important for staging isolated tumor cells do not upgrade the staging macrometastasis is basically when there is larger than 2 mm metastasis micrometastasis is when there is 0.2 to 2 mm in size metastasis and or more than 200 cells anything less than that is considered isolated tumor cells and that this would not upstage the tumor so what is stage 1 cancer stage 1 is where it is confined to the uterus corpus and the ovary now this ovary is the stage 1 a3 where we we have already seen what the criteria should be stage 1 is further divided into stage 1a stage 1b and stage 1c stage 1a is where the disease is just limited to the endometrium or where they are non aggressive histological type this is why the histological type is important for staging non aggressive histological type with invasion of less than half of the myometrium with no or focal lvsi we have already seen what it means to be having focal lvsi or basically a good prognosis disease so 1a is further divided into 1a1 1a2 1a3 1a1 they are non aggressive histological type that is limited to an endometrial polyp or the lining that is the endometrium 1a1 is where there is no tumor extending into the myometrium and it is non aggressive 1a2 when there is non aggressive histological type involving less than half of the myometrium with no or focal lvsi stage 1a3 we have already seen earlier which involves clonal expression in the ovary with the other criteria met that is there are no other metastases less than half of the myometrium and there is no substantial lvsi that means focal lvsi 1b is where there are non aggressive histological variety with invasion of half or more of the myometrium with no or focal lvsi so here 1b we have the non aggressive variety extending to more than half of the myometrium with no or focal lvsi in 1c aggressive type 1c is where we have the aggressive variety coming in in the staging aggressive type limited to the polyp or confined to the endometrium aggressive variety going to the myometrium is not included in stage 1 at all so we have the ag aggressive type limited to the endometrium in stage 1 and non aggressive type either limited to the endometrium or going into the myometrium with no or with no or focal lvsi 
just to revise the stage 1a3 which is clonal expression in the ovary simultaneous tumor ex, uh, uh, present in the ovary as well as the endometrium low grade endometrial carcinoma where there is no more than superficial myometrial invasion absence of extensive or substantial lvsi absence of additional metastasis and the ovarian tumor is unilateral limited to the ovary without capsular invasion let's see what stage 2 is stage 2 involves invasion of the cervical stroma we have seen this already what it means to be having cervical stromal invasion without extra uterine disease or with substantial lvsi if you notice in stage 1 there is no or focal lvsi now here substantial lvsi would be stage 2 or aggressive histological types with the myometrial invasion as we have seen earlier stage 1c is where aggressive type is limited to the endometrium 1 2a to b and 2c there are three types so 2a is where there is invasion of the cervical stroma of non aggressive histological type 2b is where there is substantial lvsi of non aggressive histological types 2c is where there is aggressive histological types with any myometrial involvement stage 3 is where there is local and or regional spread of the tumor of any histological type stage 3 is further divided into 3a 3b 3c in 3a there is invasion of the uterine serosa adnexa or both by direct extension or metastasis 3a1 is where there is spread to the ovary and fallopian tube which has to be differentiated from stage 1a3 stage 3a2 is involvement of the uterine subserosa or spread through the uterine serosa so here in this stage stage 3 the histological type is not so important so any histological type extending to the serosa would be stage 3a stage 3b is where there is metastasis or direct spread to the vagina and or the parametria or pelvic peritoneum 3b1 is where there is metastasis or direct spread to the vagina and or parametrium 3b2 is where there is metastasis to the pelvic peritoneum 3c is where the pelvic or paraortic lymph nodes are involved 3c1 is where pelvic lymph nodes are involved 3c2 is where paraortic lymph nodes are involved irrespective of pelvic lymph nodes again 3c1 has two variety that is micrometastasis 3c11 3c12 is micro macrometastasis similarly 3c2 has two variety micrometastasis as well as macrometastasis stage 4 is where the risk spread to the bladder mucosa and or the intestinal mucosa and or distant metastasis so 4a is where there is invasion of the bladder mucosa and or the intestinal or bowel mucosa 4b is where there is abdominal peritoneal metastasis present as compared with stage 3 that has only pelvic peritoneum involved stage 4c is where there is distant metastasis including the metastasis to any extra or intra abdominal lymph nodes above the renal vessels lungs liver brain or bone so lymph nodes above the renal vessels in addition to distant metastasis like lungs liver brain or bone is included in stage 4c molecular classification of endometrial cancer although is not included in the staging it is recommended that it is performed in stage 1 and 2 cancers as it would modify the treatment offer to these cancers and it would also modify the staging if it is available now endometrial cancer is classified into four groups one is pole mutation which has a favorable prognosis the others are mismatch repair deficient molecule non specific molecular profile p53 abnormality the performance of complete molecular classification 
is encouraged in all cases of endometrial cancer for prognostic risk group stratification and as potential influencing factors for adjuvant or systemic treatment decisions so wherever applicable or wherever available molecular classification should be done it would modify the stage in this manner if pole mutation is present then it would actually reduce the stage whether there is cervical involvement irrespective of degree of lvsi or histological type stage 1 or 2 cancers would become stage 1a m pole mutation irrespective of what staging it is stage 1 and 2 cancers if are found to be positive for p53 abnormality would be upstaged as stage 2c m p53 abnormality so p this is p53 abnormality endometrial carcinoma confined to the uterine corpus with any myometrial invasion with or without cervical invasion and regardless of the degree of lvsi or the histological type so this is how if the molecular classification is done for stage 1 and stage 2 cancers they they would be either downstaged depending on whether it is positive for pole mutation or upstaged if it is positive for p53 abnormality as p53 abnormality cancers are considered to be aggressive while pole mutation cancers are non aggressive so to revise when performed the pole mutation and p53 abnormal abnormality molecular groups can increase or decrease the stage of endometrial cancer in stage 1 and 2 hence it makes sense to offer molecular classification to those classified as stage 1 and 2 as it would affect the prognosis and upstage or downstage the disease depending on the molecular classification no changes occur through the molecular staging in stage 3 and 4 stage 3 and 4 cases for which the molecular classification is known should be recorded as stage 3m and stage 4m with the specification of the molecular class for the purpose of data collection so in stage 3 and stage 4 it wouldn't affect the staging subsequently thank you